Welcome to the DIY Writer Show with the mild-mannered, slightly heroic host, Jeff Bacon. Hey kids, this is Jeff Bacon with the DIY Writer Podcast, and today we have the infamous Phoenix Gray. If you don't know who she is, talk about the realm in between, or if you want to talk about anything lit RPG or gaming, this is the person that we talked to right here. Look her up on Facebook, you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, Phoenix, how are you doing today? Or should I I'm say do- Deadly Sniper? Oh, geez, <laughs> I'm pretty good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. <laughs> it's a little colder up here in Wisconsin than uh, than uh, where you're at, but you know what? We survive. I think it's funny that it's like 25 degrees outside, you know, and I'm sitting here in a t-shirt and you're down in Texas and you're wearing a coat, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I think it's I think it's almost sixty degrees outside, and here I am in this like super fluffy uh, like jacket. So is it sad that I'm jealous? No, no, it's normal. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> very good, very good. So how are you doing today? I'm doing okay. It's uh, had a doctor's appointment. That's always exciting, and uh, fought to get this computer working for this uh, this podcast interview. So, <laughs> but here I am. I made it. I made it. So fix the computer. Saw the doctor. Everything's cool. Yep, everything's cool. Got got my uh, marketing stuff done today, so Woo-hoo! gonna have a beer after this. Excited to have the beer. So <laughs> why don't you have a beer while we're doing this? Because I drank them all last night. <laughs> oh, so you have to go get beer. Ah, yeah, I'm gonna go to a little craft beer place with a friend. So low craft. What's oh that? Uh, no, it's just a little craft beer place. Oh, craft beer. I, okay. I'm like, I don't. I'm not sure. I'm in Wisconsin. We have a lot of beers. I'm not sure what low craft is, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't heard of that one either. Yeah, all but, right, uh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So what kind of beer do you like to drink? Stouts. Stouts? Much, yeah, stouts most of the time, especially when it's cold, because I, I, I don't know, they've got kind of a chocolatey taste, which I like. But then I yeah. also like uh, Mexican beers, too, so. Ooh, Corona and such? Not Corona, but okay. I go uh, Dos Equis usually. Oh, sure. That's, yeah, that's all right. Only dressed, and I, I really like the Modelo Chiladas a lot, so I drink a ton mm-hmm. of those. But uh, Yeah, Modelo. Yeah. I just, anybody who says they like Corona, it's like, you got to be lying. I'm serious. <laughs> you don't really like Corona. You're just doing it because your friends like it, and they don't like it either. It's not real beer. Yeah, I don't, I don't know a whole lot of people that actually drink it. I think I know one person that drinks Corona. I know all sorts of people that, that buy it, and they like, oh, man, Corona, I love it. And it's like, no, you don't. Nobody actually loves it. They can't. It just sucks. It's like a watered down Dos Equis. It's a little bit sweeter, but I don't know. To, to each their own. So. I don't know. So, what kind of stouts do you drink? Like oatmeal stouts or? Um, I drink anything Stout usually stouts. chocolatey. Uh, I was drinking. I've been drinking Buffalo Bayou. They have a gingerbread one. I don't know the exact name of it, but it's got like a dead gingerbread on the bottle. Oh. Uh, yeah, I've been drinking that one. I usually try a bunch of different ones. Um, I like Young's Double Chocolate Stout. Uh, pretty much anything that, that has like a more chocolatey flavor or a more okay. spiced flavor, I like. Okay. I find myself, uh, um, usually my default is Guinness. I like Guinness, you know. I started uh, on Guinness. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, like if I just want, that's, that's kind of my... Uh, um, you know, just my whatever beer. Um, I got kind of hooked on Scotch ales. I like Scotch ales just because, mm-hmm. you know, they're, uh, I don't know. They just kind of screw with me a little bit. And then I like stouts. I like, I like dark beers for the yeah. most part. I think, I think Scotch ale is probably the lightest thing I drink. Um, but every now and then I'll buy a, uh, tw- uh, 12 pack of Coors just for nostalgia because that's all we drink in high school, but, uh, oh, really? Yeah, you know, you get correct yeah. about it. I think the only time I ever drink like Milwaukee's best is like the one that me and my dad drink when we go hunting, but that's about the only time. Well, I do drink, I'll drink a Budweiser every once in a while. It's got to be free though. I'm not going to pay for it. That sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> there is no such thing as a bad free beer. <laughs> this is true. This is very much true. <laughs> <laughs> it all tastes great at that point as long as it's free. Yeah, but, uh, uh, Anything, I, it's funny because I don't like bourbon, and uh, so like a lot of the pa- stouts are imperial stouts, and they're aged in like the bourbon barrel. And I, yep. if I can taste that, I'm like, oh no. But don't like bourbon? No. 
It's because I had is one of those bad experience things that everybody talks about. Like most people don't like tequila because they had a bad ex not most people, but a lot of people don't like tequila because they had a bad experience with it. Uh, uh, when I was in high school, I drank. I did the the thing all kids do, and I drank my parents' bottle of bourbon. Gave yeah. myself alcohol poisoning. Tried to put water in it. Of course, it was like looked like vodka by the time I filled it back up with water. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll never forget that vomiting. So haven't yeah. haven't been able to stomach it since. Oh. Uh... See, uh, if I'm going to go hard liquor, it's usually bourbon or tequila. I do like tequila. I, vodka's mine, my favorite, though. Yeah. I I just can't get into vodka. I don't know why. I just, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just like, eh, I don't know. I just like, I like the flavor of tequila. I really I do. I think it's because I mix. Uh, there's a lot of drinks with vodka that I like. So um, I like Bloody Mary's. Bloody Mary's like my favorite mixed drink. And uh, you, know, you, you can do screwdrivers. You can do a, vodka is pretty versatile. So, but yeah, tequila is good too. I like tequila. Yeah. I uh, actually went to the uh, uh, liquor store the other day and I picked up Long Island iced tea mix. Oh no. <laughs> Was it pre-mixed? Yeah. Oh no. Well, did you like it? Yeah. I was surprised. Oh no. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I know what you're talking about. Well, though. just the, uh, the, um, <laughs> Uh, desert island i think or something like that so it's just got all the liquors in there mm -hmm. and then you finish it off with the triple sec and the in the coke. oh okay so i thought it was the premix okay no not the pre no not the premix but it's actually it, it was just a bottle and they had it on sale and it's like it's got all the liquors in it so you don't have to measure anything out it's got you know everything in there except for the uh or not it's it, it's it doesn't have the triple sec. It doesn't have the uh, any lemon or anything like that. And if you want to add a little bit of Coke to it, you know, I mean, it's just it's just a clear bottle of stuff. And it's like, huh, I'm going to try this. What the heck? Because it was way cheaper than picking everything else up. And I picked it up and mixed it up. It was like, ooh, this is good. And like three into it, I'm like, oh, that was too damn good. <laughs> that actually sounds like a brilliant idea. I'm going to have to look for that. Unfortunately, no writing got done that night. But you know what? I had fun. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I've been doing the drinking and editing thing. So blessedly, my other my editor will not actually drink when she's editing. But while I'm doing my first pass of edits, I've been having having an alcoholic beverage. So yeah, you see, I don't I don't drink when I edit. That's I, good. Uh, You're not supposed to. Yeah, I, mean, I kind of go by Hemingway's Hemingway's rules, you know, drink while you're writing and be sober when you edit type thing. You yeah. Know? So. Yeah, I was talking about that in the lit RPG. Uh, Authors Guild, and they were telling me the same thing. They were like, "Yeah, it's okay to do it while you write, but don't touch it while you're editing." And I'm like, "Ah, oh, well, another editor's gonna like an actual editor's gonna get to this after me, so it's probably it's probably okay." It's probably okay. As I cut out like thirty thousand words worth of stuff, so. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I'm I'm real bad about I hack and slash when I do my own edits, so. Oh really? Yeah, most a lot of people add. I'm just like cut. Nope, nope. This isn't gonna make it, but. See, I started doing it differently, which I, I like, and I just start, I started just building on an outline. And so my, uh, my first draft is, is kind of eh. And then after I go through and I, I do my second draft, that's where I just start adding stuff. And then when I go through the edit, I find myself adding more than I'm actually taking away. Um, it's just a different process. I don't know why I started doing it that way, but it just seemed like it made more sense because I, I try and get the, the story out first and then get, make sure there's no damn plot holes. Now I'll put in, you know, the, the, uh, the grave, whatever, and you know, the descriptions and everything else. And I don't They're know. not fun to write stuff. <laughs> They're not fun to write stuff. Right. You know, so I'll put the action in and then I'll figure out the dialogue. The dialogue will be the next sweep. And then once you get the dialogue done, then it's like, okay, let's rewrite this. We have it actually. So they know they're standing in a room or something, you know, whatever. I mean, I, just, I started doing that. It seems to be working for me, but it seems to be faster for me versus That's trying to write the whole damn thing out and then hack the shit out of it and everything else. But, yeah, that's an interesting process. Yeah, for sure. I've been talking to a lot of people that definitely add stuff, but not quite the way your process sounds like, which is I'm weird, so don't follow me on anything. <laughs> oh no, I used to I used to be a, a panster, and I used to like write myself in the corners. And now I think I think I write extra when I do write. So I'll like my manuscript now. Like I think I finished it at 450 pages, and 
I'm a little more than halfway through the edits and I'm down to like 420 pages right now. But uh, yeah, cause I, I, some of the stuff I write is just like, okay, this is over the top or, you know, this is, they were fighting a little too much or mm -hmm. I'm like, man, there's, I, I cut out a few fight scenes out of this book just because I had this one quest that there was just a billion fight scenes. And I'm like, this, this is going to eventually get boring. So I need to kind of take a little bit of this out. So that's my process. Yeah, I cut. <laughs> well, you know, which I mean, that's I'm not saying that's wrong. I just I, I stumbled upon this and realized that what I was doing and I'm a pantser. I can't outline, but I've been desperately trying to outline. So I think my my stupid brain came up with this. It's like, OK, pants your outline and then repants it. You know, and so I've got like three or four pairs of pants on top of my rough draft or whatever it is. <clears throat> Yeah, there's definitely no wrong way to do it. Every not, I'm not gonna say everybody has a different way of doing it, but a lot of people have different ways of doing it. None of it's wrong as long as you get the book done. That's all that matters. Oh no, there's lots of there's lots of authors out there that'll tell you that's the wrong way to do it. No really? Doing, oh yeah. Listen, now you have to understand the writing process. Okay, tell me all about it, please. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Yeah, now I, I have met those people that are like, it has to be exactly like this. And mm -hmm. then I'm just like, well, how much money are you making with your writing? <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. But yeah, that's the first thing that goes through my mind is, uh, let me just look you up on Amazon. Oh, two books. Okay. <laughs> and they're five years apart. Good, good, good. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I wish you well. But yeah, I've usually the people that give me the, the bad advice are the people that don't have the experience. So um, usually the people that give advice are not the people I want to get advice from, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, or unsolicited advice too. <laughs> that, you know, that's a better way of putting it. If somebody wants to give me advice on, on what I'm doing wrong, I usually want to ask somebody that I know, Hey, this guy's like, or this gal, you know, whatever. I mean, okay, here's someone I respect. Look at this. Tell me what I screwed up, you know, and they'll be honest with me, but somebody that come, you know, flies in and dive bombs me and says, Oh my God, you have to do this. And da, da, da. Oh my God, you can't do that. I was like, who are you again? Sorry. <laughs> you know, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's also like people with more like uh traditional, like English backgrounds or that are more familiar with, um, traditional publishing and stuff like that they they're like there's a certain system in the way that you have to do things but self-publishing i feel like has blown the doors off of that there's so many authors coming in from different backgrounds and you know that aren't uh, you know trained in in the uh, ways the traditional ways of how you plot and all that and there's nothing wrong with that i mean some of the best authors out there well answers uh, and what do you got you got three plot here you got uh, three milestones, five milestones, nine milestones, 14 milestones, and 19, I think, or something like that. And then everything in between what people are coming up with and saying, this is the way you need to write a book. I just laugh at that because it's like, I'm not entirely sure any of that matters. And I don't, I, know, I don't know that there's an entire structure out there that needs to be adhered to. I think it's more of a matter of, can you make it work? And if you can fucking make it work, then throw it out there. Yeah. I, I think that's what it's coming down to is, you know, nobody really cares what your, what your structure and, and uh, plot is, as long as you don't have any holes and it works. Then I think, yeah. you know, okay. Yeah. And I was, I just write the stuff I want to read. So yeah. that's, that's how I go about doing it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So. No, nope. I don't think there's anything wrong. With somebody that uh, reads their Kalytic reports and says, you know what, I'm going to write, uh, you know, urban fantasy, Swedish cookbook romances this week. Yeah. Because they're selling hot, <laughs> you know, whatever. I mean, there's lots of different ways to, I mean, it is a business too. And there's lots of different ways to, to do your thing, whatever works for you. As long as you're not harming anybody, that's all that matters. So, so, you know, you're like this, this uh, cool chick that I just want to sit down and have beers with, you know, and you know what the problem with that is deadly sniper. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't, yeah. I didn't even realize that was the name and you brought it up like multiple times and not until we started this. I was like, oh shit, my name's not even down there. Oh shit. <laughs> Anybody who wants to know this is Phoenix Gray, not Deadly Sniper. Although she might be, we don't know. Yeah. Her dad drinks Budweiser and uh, 
all sorts of other stuff. But yeah, <laughs> given that you're so cool and I'm just enjoying the, the hell out of talking to you, it makes it kind of hard to run a podcast where we talk about books. I'm sorry. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's extend on the coolness for just a minute there, Phoenix. Let's talk about your books. All right. So uh, I write The Realm Between. That is my uh, primary series that I am writing right now. Uh, it is a epic fantasy lit RPG. There are currently seven books in the series. Book eight is coming out uh, at the beginning of next month. Um, I just released a box set with the first three books, and that's planned to be a 12 book series. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've really loved uh, writing it. I'm probably going to wrap the series up in, I would say, 2022. Okay. But. Uh, that's the plan. I don't know if I'm going to write that fast. Life's been crazy. You know, <laughs> everything's been up and down with all the, the stuff with COVID and just life in general. So I think but, the entire nation's going nuts. Oh, yeah. Still, still for sure. I mean, if it's not one thing, it's another. But uh, yeah, it's just a video game fantasy. Uh, it's about a, a guy who is uh, who's in a coma stuck inside of a, a video game and uh, at first he oh, kind of knows he, it's a, he's in a coma yes oh cool yeah so at first he actually worked for this uh or he works for the the company that uh produced this game but uh the, they originally released it before the vr stuff or at the beginning of the vr stuff and it just tanked really bad it was a really crappy game so uh they switched over to doing stuff for the medical industry they're actually um, secretly still working on this project, trying to bring it back to life in the background. So they decided to kind of test it on coma patients to both test out the game and see if they could use it to bring uh, these patients out of their coma. Sure. So uh, when he goes into the game at first, he thinks uh, he thinks he's in a game. But after time, he kind of loses that sense of being in a game and thinks it becomes his real life. So uh, it kind of progresses in that fashion, but uh, the the whole plot of it is he eventually kind of has to figure out how to get out of this uh, game and thus his coma. But yet to be seen if that's going to happen. <laughs> so there's there's still a lot of books to go. <laughs> that's um that's really cool. I like that. So he's in a coma and they and they stuff him in a uh, in a uh, R lit RPG. When I hear lit RPG. And when I actually started reading fiction again, which was, you know, uh, when I started out, it was, you know, um, I started not reading. I read technical journals and crap like that. It was like 95-ish or whatever. And then it was 2008 before I ever picked up another fiction book, which was, you know, absolutely horrible. Um, I should have been reading it all the time. But uh, watching the emergence of, uh, of Lit RPG is, is uh, I, I was, when I was a teenager, I was probably one of six people that actually liked the movie Tron. And that's what it reminds me of anytime I read uh, anything Lit RPG is, you know, Tron and, and, uh, and uh, that series. I don't know why. I, I, I just loved it. I thought it was great. But uh, now that there's actually a genre out there for it, it uh, it's absolutely amazing to me. Yeah, yeah. I always thought of uh, of anime, of course, as the first place that I think of because I watched Dot Hack like a long time ago, yeah. and then there's a bunch of Isekais and stuff like that that do the game stats. And I was wondering why why this wasn't like popular in the U.S. yet. And uh, then when I found out that there was actually a genre of writing books about it uh, mm -hmm. that's, that started getting popularity in the U.S., I was pretty excited about that because it melds things that I love. You know, I play a lot of video games uh, and uh, and also I love fantasy. So I was like, oh, this is this is pretty good, pretty good stuff. So what kind of video games do you play? Um, right now I am playing uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. I'm also playing, I'm going to butcher the way that it's pronounced, but I say Disgaea. I think it's not pronounced like that. It's a um, turn-based, like, tactical RPG. Um, and I also just downloaded this Blacksmith game that I'm also playing. I usually don't play this many games at one time. Um, I've got an author, uh, an Among Us game coming up next Wednesday with a bunch of other little RPG authors that we are going to stream. So uh, we're going to be uh, killing each other 
in front of everybody uh, <laughs> is the is the plan. So there's I play a little bit of everything. I also play uh, Phasmophobia. I like which is uh, the Ghost Hunter game. I don't know if you've heard of that one. No, nope, but I uh, but yeah. So I, I I like a variety of things. More on the the uh, RPG side. Yeah. But what about you? What do you play? Uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. I I absolutely I haven't done you know. I actually haven't played any games in probably 10 years. You know, honestly, the last, the last game I played, I think was, uh, was a, a fishing game with my three-year-old. <clears throat> That's cute. <laughs> that, was, that was it. I just, I absolutely haven't, uh, I haven't done anything as far as gaming goes at, at least for 10 years. So. so when he, when he starts getting older, he's probably going to want you to play with him. Uh, she might, she might. <laughs> oh, she might. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, it's been something that uh, that I've been wanting to get back into, but time is a problem. Yeah. So yeah, I, I got get my uh, computer business. I got uh, you know I'm trying to write some books. You know I got the podcast and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff where you know I'm trying to make some money. Oh no, I feel you. I I usually like squeeze it in between work tasks. Like I'll edit a chapter and then I'm like, okay, I can play one level of this game and then I've got to go back to work. Yeah. So that's kind of how I get it in. But it's it, it is hard to make free time when you have so many business things going on. I can uh, definitely sympathize. I've got that, and I've got a nine month old and a three year old. So it's like okay, something you know. It's kind of been my uh, my life for uh, last uh, uh, twenty years actually is you know there's some sort there's some sort of kid around and uh and just trying to work so <laughs> gaming uh gaming went away you're like it's time to adult it's full, time to adult damn it full it's, on adult it's boring <laughs> as hell so you know at some point in time well boring but so what do you do with your free time do you i don't have any Oh, okay well there we go <laughs> yeah i i uh you know I'll, I'll read books that's about it and if i'm not playing with the kids um i think the next thing that i do with my with my free time is i'll go work out oh, I, got a, that... I got a gym downstairs just so i can go down and break a sweat at least you know or something like that but even when i i've got a sauna downstairs too if i sit in the sauna i'm, I'm writing on a notepad trying to figure out how the hell i'm gonna you know pull something off or whatever it just seems like you know especially this year life's been so crazy it's just yeah it's it's work kids sleep work kids sleep or kids kids work kids sleep you know but uh yeah, yeah but then yeah. I, I i watch uh you guys online and it's like oh that looks like so much fun god i wish i had oh man <laughs> yeah i gotta go yeah <laughs> yeah it's Definitely, definitely take some scheduling in or figuring out how to make time for it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I used to, uh, this is going to date me quite a bit, but um, Doom and then, uh, um, oh, I just had it in my head. The uh, the shooter game where everybody dresses up and you'd, you'd uh, set up a server and we used to do it in the office all the time too over lunches. Uh, Quake. Quake. Yeah. yeah, I've never played either of those. Yeah, and uh, you know, I was so into that, and then uh, and uh, I mean, it would just that would consume my lunch hour, and then we would stay after work a little bit to do that, and uh, you know, so that does date me quite a bit. But uh, I was an IT guy, so we could set up our own servers and do whatever we wanted to. So you get a group of people that wouldn't narc on you to your boss, and hey, hurry up, jump on, you know, <laughs> type stuff like that. And then I fell out of it. Yeah. I just, I just stopped. And then, you know, I, I sit there and I look at the, at the gaming sites. It's like, what's out there now? It's like, Oh, that looks so cool. I bet I suck. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm oh, sucking at that. You know, <laughs> I just, you know, so that's my little fantasy world. It's like, I want to be a gamer, but I can't be, but you know, like dungeons and dragons. I've never actually played dungeons and dragons. <laughs> Oh, you should. It's so much fun. You know, and uh, well, my joke to everybody else is that, you know, back when Dungeons and Dragons came out, it was it was like after um, I shouldn't say came out, but uh, when it started getting popular, I was in college and I decided to have a dating life versus playing that game because back then it was kind of ostracized. Now it's the cool thing. It's like, shit, what am I thinking? I should have done it. 
Oh, you think video games are a time suck, though? Yeah, D and D. D and D is a <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you if you get regular campaign going, you're looking at like once a week, four six hour nights playing. So. Yeah, I know, I know, but, but you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna be getting into that anytime soon. The last thing this guy needs is one more bad habit. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, you know, <clears throat> time suck for right now. <laughs> but so, what else is going on? What do you do for What do you do for fun besides gaming? That's it. I, I have no life. I work so much. I work so much. This is actually the first time I'm going out for a beer with friends and like I actually really have to think about it. It's probably been about a year since I've went out. Oh, really? For like just a beer with with friends. Yeah. Um, I did have it. We did have a date night, like a, a double date, me and my boyfriend last weekend with some friends, but this is like my first solo night out in a very, very, very long time. But yeah, I, I work crazy. Like I work from the time I get up to the time I go to sleep pretty much. And if I can get a video game in there every once in a while, I will. But I've got, I mean, I have so many things going on too in the background. I, I've got uh, foreign uh, foreign translations, audiobook stuff that uh, I'm always doing too. And it's just, it's it's a lot. It's a business and yeah, yep. it makes it, makes it, eat up a lot of time but yeah open a business they said it'll be fun they said oh yeah (laughs) you really want the author life (laughs) yeah really okay never mind (laughs) yeah yeah when people i I say that tongue-in-cheek it is it is fun but yeah i mean there's a lot of freedoms but there's also a lot of responsibilities that i think a lot of people don't even think about that we have so no no, and it does it does suck it does suck things up. Yeah. I'm I'm lucky enough to be self employed, so I can I can schedule things and everything else, but I work from seven thirty in the morning till about four thirty in the afternoon, take a break. You know, that's when the kids come home from daycare and and uh you know, have supper, play with the kids, and then it's eight o'clock at night until I get my shit done which is usually at the very earliest, you know, 1130 midnight, you know, usually there's been nights when, or there's been mornings where uh, my wife has walked into my office. Oh, you're up early. Yeah. Yeah, I am. No, I never went to bed, you know. Oh, geez. (laughs) Yeah. That's real bad. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not bad, but you know, there's just a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely get stressed when I start falling behind and uh, when you when you take a day off you feel guilty about it and, and that's one of my new year's resolutions is to not feel so bad about uh, cutting myself some slack cuz I really don't do it a lot and yeah um, makes for a high stress life the the uh, nice thing <laughs> you know the, the one thing that uh, I can tell everybody else is that you know what you can take a day off and that work will be there tomorrow you don't have to worry about it and I feel like such a hypocrite in saying that because I don't do that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't even take weekends off. I mean, you know, I'll, I mean, the kids are here. So, I mean, I'll screw around with them. But as soon as, you know, as soon as I can, I'm back in my office screwing around again. Yeah. I, I try to think of a, I don't know if you've ever read the four hour work week, but uh, yeah, you didn't like it. Oh, I thought it was great. Um, yeah. He, I love fiction. <laughs> you love fiction. He talks about how, uh, you know, you think about it and you're like, what's the worst thing that could happen if I, like, put this off for a day? The absolute worst thing, and can I recover from it? And uh, I try to think of that anytime I take a day off. I'm like, if I take a day off, the world's not going to end. You know, the the worst case scenario is usually probably something I can recover from. So try not to feel guilty about it. The, uh, the thing that I find is that, um, I throw a lot of shit on myself. And so like right now I'm designing uh, coffee mugs for the podcast for merchandise so cool. and I'm just doing, you know, stupid sayings or something. If an author says something funny, I'll write it down. It's like, yeah, cool. I'm going to put her quote on there, you know, or whatever. I mean, just whatever. And I just thought it'd be a cool thing to do. Oh my God. Does that take a lot of time just, to you know, get some graphics and, you know, I'm playing with some cartoons that I got and, you know, everything else. And it's just like, you know, it, it's kind of fun. What happens if I don't get it done on time? Nothing. You know, you just, you make one, you throw it out there and just have some fun with it. 
you know, they're kind of stupid, smart assy things. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm like almost too driven to where it's like, this has to be done, you know, and I screwed up my camera, <clears throat> but <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. feel you. I definitely, I definitely try to juggle more balls than I can handle. Um, but uh, yeah, like I, I was working on a, a tabletop game like D and D with my series, and I was trying to do that on top of writing, and I was running myself in the ground, so I put that on hold. And uh, I, I'm trying to build like another business outside of writing, which still has to do with writing, but outside of writing, and it's tried to do that at the same time that I've been writing, ran myself into the ground. So it's 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 hard when you want to do so many things, but you don't have enough time in the day, and then mm -hmm. you you spend all your time just working and working and working, and then you you just get stressed out. And I will I I for the last month I've stopped doing this because I I realized what I was doing to myself, but uh, I was taking like three hours and just going someplace, you know whether it was you know, going to a park, whether it was going, you know, just someplace else, someplace out of my house. And I'm just writing ideas. I'm just doing, you know, just ideas for books, ideas for this, you know, what I can do with my businesses. I mean, just anything that pops in my head, I'm writing this down. Okay. And what I found was then I take it, I bring it back and I prioritize it like, oh, this is cool. This is, th this one's crap, you know, whatever. And what I found was I had so many ideas that I'm, you know, prioritizing and saying, okay, I need to do this. I need to do that. And I'm just throwing too much shit on my plate. Realistically. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. the getting out every day is good because I think getting out of your house is actually very good for your mental state of mind to just yes. get out and walk around. But yeah, piling work on top of that. No, yeah. no good. <laughs> Bad. So one of my new year's resolutions was hiring a virtual assistant. You know, it's like, it was very hard for me to go, okay, here, take this little bit for me. You know, I was like, okay. Yeah, I actually hired one uh, before the end of the year because, again, for our work week, I, was kind of, I had just read it and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this because I have like so much work I can pass off. And uh, she quit because she had too little work to do. So, oh, geez. But, uh, yeah, I have a hard time giving up control of stuff too, though. So, yeah, I've got a, I've got a, I've, I've got one. She's awesome. She really is. So Bethany, when you're listening to this, you are awesome. Um, and she keeps on saying, do you have anything you, what, what do you want me to do to help? And I'm like, oh, okay, you're right. I need to give you some more stuff, but you know, she's, she doesn't seem to mind the, uh, I mean, what she's doing right now is awesome. It takes just a heap off my plate. I just need to give her some more. Yeah, I probably eventually, eventually I'm going to get to that point where I can, let go of some more stuff but i feel like most of the stuff i have has my personal or my financial information attached to it so i'm definitely less inclined to let go of that stuff yeah but, uh stuff like audiobooks i i must confess i have never listened well i have listened to one of my audiobooks all the way through but i do not do it anymore i haven't done it for years uh, i pass audio proofing off to i do have an assistant specifically just for that that i pass audiobook proofing off to but um the only other thing I can think of that I can pass off is my Facebook stuff. Um, and yeah, apparently it wasn't enough work. So yeah, um, I finally am audiobook free. Nice. Well, I, was, I had to get out of Audible. I just, I don't want to deal with them anymore. Oh, completely? Yeah, I got out of Audible. Is there a, a reason or is that? Too yeah, personal? because of all the stupid shit they're doing with returns. I, I didn't have that issue. I heard uh, people in my group, my uh, author's group, were talking about that too, but I never had an issue with that. Yeah. So but, uh, I, was yeah, I know a lot of people did. I was, I, I got out of everything. And so right now I have zero audiobooks out there. So I'm going to be working on, and I didn't, I wasn't necessarily happy with the narr narration at the time. Um, and uh, so I'm going to redo them. I'm, I'm toying with the idea of narrating, narrating them myself versus hiring you could do somebody. It. And I just, you know, I've got all the equipment to do it, you know, and I might, I might end up doing that. I don't know. I'm just still kind of playing with it, you know, how I want to do that and everything else. But well, like you said, you've got the perfect setup for it. So yeah, it's not too bad. 
Not too bad. Yeah. The book's all in the back and everything, you know. <clears throat> Whatever. Um, anyway. Yeah, most of my books are are, uh, are royalty share, so I think getting out of ACX would be a lot harder for me. And I have over a hundred. I have a hundred and fifty something audiobooks, so. No. Yeah, that would be a that'd be a little difficult for me. <laughs> that, would be, that would be. Yeah, I was lucky. I only had three. The two I got out right away because they weren't roy royalty share, and the other one, which is outdated, um, took me a bit for some reason because it was under a different contract. Huh. And it's like okay. You know, and I've got, um, I stopped doing it when I started hearing about problems and, um, I just never, I didn't go to find away voices or anything else and, uh, you know, start up someplace else. I just stopped doing them. So, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not even sure what I would do if it wasn't, uh, if it wasn't ACX, but or audible, you know, yeah. audible. Audible. Yeah, we, we should probably see the, the retail <laughs> name. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, audiobooks are on the rise. So, uh, but they they really do. I feel bad for uh, for the narrators because I feel like the narrators get the really bad end of the stick on that one too. So. Yeah, I, uh, I well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Um, but on the other hand, I don't know. I mean, I, I've seen some of those people that, uh, you know, they have so many different revenue shares with so many different authors that they do all right. You know, I, I'm, I'm not complaining too much about them or yeah. they're not complaining too much about, you know, the revenue side of it. Um, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I feel bad for all of my narrators until I actually figured out how to market audiobooks. Um, but now even uh, Audible's changed stuff to where even that's uh, difficult these days to... Uh, to make I, it easy to market books but i think audible is going to go through a bunch of changes i think they're going to have to just because of all the uh you know kobo and uh um, book you know they got that chirp service i think or something like that yeah you know i think they're gonna i think audible is gonna have to kind of straighten up a little bit it's an amazon company we'll see <laughs> we'll see but you know <clears throat> Amazon seems to uh, to like you know follow like iBooks, you know because they're worried about iBooks taking over their uh, their uh, bookstore, you know. So I mean that's that's something, and I think BookBub's probably big enough that if they actually get Trip off the ground and it's really rocking and rolling, I think they'll change something in in Audible. Hopefully, yeah. Be be yet to be seen. All these changes, of course, they they affect everybody down the line. So hopefully, any change that comes out is a good change. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, not all change is good, is it? No, 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 for sure, for sure, it is not. <laughs> yeah, um, are you in? Uh, are you in KU, or do you go wide? Uh, yes, all of my books across all of my pen names are in Kindle Unlimited, just because you know, uh, Amazon. And I am very grateful for them for letting, allowing me to do this full time, but uh, they have pretty much killed the other retailers. <clears throat> of course, Lit, Lit RPG doesn't have uh, as big of a following on the other retailers anyway, but even in, in other genres, the majority of the readers are, um, are on Amazon. And a lot of them have Kindle Unlimited because it makes financial sense for them. Right. So um, I, I hate the page read payout thing. Uh, it's, it's not as bad in lit RPG because I have to write these humongous books, but uh, just in general, it's, I mean, when you're getting paid half a penny for a page, it's, it's kind of shitty. I'll just come right out and say it's kind of shitty. Kind of shitty. So. It is kind of shitty. I, uh, you know, it, it's funny. Everybody's got their own opinions, but uh, there's a lot of people that, uh, that go wide and just everything's fine. They make the same amount of money. Yeah, it's hard to, it's it's a diff, different marketing beast, I will say yep. that much. Marketing wide and depending on the genre, like uh, in the romance genre, book covers for wide are different than book covers for KU. Uh, even their readers have like, they look at different things. So uh, it's it's definitely interested, uh, interesting. Uh, I'm not sure how, how different it is for things like fantasy. Uh, I've never taken, you know, the realm between uh, wide and I probably never will. But, uh, but yeah, it's definitely a different monster. I feel like. Mm -hmm. 
I, I would agree. I, and I also agree with you that, uh, it, you know, based on genre, whether or not it's a good, good idea to do it or not, I'm playing with it because I've got uh, three books that have been out there for a year that, you know, after a year, they can, eh, you know, do I want to kick up the advertising or do I want to re-release wide? I'm actually playing with, I'm, I'm probably going to go wide with those. And then in the process, I'm going to release two more books in that series. And I've got 12 other books or 10 other books that I want to throw out this year. So I've been stockpiling this year. Oh, that's good. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One thing I've noticed, because uh, with, with my romance books, I have been in and out of KU. I've taken them wide. And usually whenever you switch, you'll see a bump wherever you go. So if you took all your books and you put them wide, you'd see a bump wide, but it'll eventually taper off. And the same thing going back into KU, you'll get all these page reads because there's new eyes on your books, but right. then they, they tend to taper off. So well, um, I was talking to, um, we'll say a, a, a very prominent author. Okay. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm pretty sure I don't have his permission to actually quote him on this so but uh and if you actually listen to this podcast he'll know, be like yeah thanks you know whatever but, uh, his theory is is that the readership in in amazon <clears throat> cycles every three to five every three to four years you know to where you know you get new readers in there and you'll have other readers that may drop off and go to other platforms or whatever but he said you know every three years you will see, and that's based on his sales from what he's, what he's seen from the beginning of time. And he's an older author. And he said that if he would have been thinking right, he would have uh, put his books on a, uh, on a uh, cycle to match that of when to go wide and then bring it back into KU. And, you know, he's like playing all these different statistics and everything. He's much more educated than I am on the book uh, business. He's published and he, he's got publishers that publish his books and he's also Indian on some of them. And uh, I was just sitting there listening to him. It's like, holy crap. That, I, you know, number one, that'd be a hell of a thing to manage, especially with the amount of books that he has. I'm sure he hired somebody to do it. But number two, okay, we're getting at about two and a half years. Let's go ahead and put this out wide, you know, and, and screw Amazon and uh, in KU. And then, okay, now this has dwindled down. Let's take it back in and put it only on Amazon and put it back into KU. And he says, he sees that same thing, except for it's a, it's a uh, more substantial spike. And he said, you can do that every year or every two years, whatever. It just depends on the genre. Yeah. And it's like, Cool. He said, it's all about making profits, my boy. And it's like, okay, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, at the end of the day, it is a business for sure. It's a it business. is a business. But I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it sounds like a really good idea. You're much, you know, he's much more, uh, he has many more resources than I do. And he's probably, uh, you know, got people that do that for him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I'm sure, it, I'm, I'm sure he came up with the idea, but it's just like, I'm not sure I could manage that. You know, it's much easier just to plunk it into Amazon and say, done. Okay, go sell. Here's some ads, you know. Yeah. Every time, every time I take my romance stuff out and put it back in, it is, it's a process and a little bit of a nightmare because I, I do have a lot and uh, I'll try to drip feed, like just do like one book a week that I'll put in wide. So hopefully to keep it from not like going like this after you put them all in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's definitely something in t uh, taking them out and putting them back in genre dependent again. Yeah. Um, and also I'm like, like you said, he probably actually like collects all this data. I, I envy the people that collect the data because I am not patient enough to, to do that. But uh I've got gobs and gobs and gobs of data on, on everything I've done in a database and I haven't analyzed it. Well, just because, well I haven't, I haven't, you know, I, I just haven't had a need. It's like, well, everything seems to be going fine. Okay. <laughs> I got yeah. this other thing to do over here, you know, type thing. And yeah, one of these days I'm going to have to bust that thing open and just look at it and see what, uh, you know, I, I have a general idea of what's going on, but, uh, you know, to actually see concrete data behind it. And then you always get those surprises. Oh, shit, that's happening. You know, that stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, I have a, a spreadsheet. The, the only like super consistent thing that I can look at, it has all of my income from the time I went full time, which was in uh, 2012 to now and my income for every month. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, that's when KU happened. And that's when I got kicked out of KU because I actually did get kicked out of KU for a year. Oh, you did? And, uh, yeah, because I had so many books. So oh. uh, in, the, in the beginning, well, in the beginning, when I was writing romance, I had I serialized, uh, which is okay. which was pretty popular back then because they didn't KU didn't exist. Uh, you would write like a 5000 word book, sell it for two ninety nine and make like crazy amounts of money. Right. So I would have these serials that would have like 12 or like 20 parts. And uh, then uh, KU happened and I went wide. So I tried to move about 100 books into wide, and I forgot one or two. Oh. And yeah, and uh, K, you know, Amazon saw it, and they kicked me out of K. Uh, they said I couldn't do KU anymore. Uh, I think it was when I was trying to move back into KU, I missed one. Oh. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a third time's a charm. I'd moved in and out enough and uh, they caught me, I think three times on it. And it was an accident every single time with when you're moving a hundred books yourself, it's just hard to keep on top of it. Right. Uh, so yeah, I got kicked out of KU for a year and then they, they let me back in after that. But, uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was, that was bad. Cause I had just bought a house too. And, uh, that's when wide was, uh, was not doing so hot. It's when Amazon was really starting to take down, uh, the other retailers. So the other I retailers, went. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that year was rough. I was definitely living like paycheck to paycheck uh, to get through that year. But um, yeah, that was that was interesting time. But I, and I've worked a lot with Amazon too. I've done their Kindle Scout program. I did Kindle Worlds when they had that. And uh, I mean, they actually contacted me for Kindle Worlds, and they give me all sorts of you know promos. Uh, but uh, yeah, no one is above uh, above the Amazon. No one can. Uh, of course, I, I mine was an honest mistake. But of course, there have been other authors that have tried to game the system. And it doesn't matter how big you are, how much money you are making them, they will take you down if they uh, if you rub them the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> they catch you doing something. You can only say sorry so many times, and they're like, no, 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 you're done. Yeah. Yeah, they've they've taken down some uh, some banned some some big people that made them a lot of money, mm -hmm. but uh, of course some mistakes are honest, some mistakes aren't. But we're we're not going to get into that. No. <laughs> yeah, there's there's some there's some people that game the system, but what do you think about serializing things? Going back to that, it doesn't work anymore, for sure. I don't know anybody who does it successfully anymore. Uh, I think serializing is more for like Patreon if you want to yeah. try to make money with it. But uh, as far as Amazon or even wide, I just don't think there's, it's it's easier to do wide because people have to pay a fixed price, but still, I don't think it's very popular anymore. Mm. I would love if that was a thing again, because I actually really love serializing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's just not, not a good business move these days, I feel like. Uh. Well, you know what? I'll let you know when I uh, get it done, but I've got it. I'm doing that. Definitely. <laughs> let me know. Let me know. <laughs> I'm doing novelettes though. I'm not doing, I'm not doing like the little tiny, you know, I'm each one's about 20,000. Yeah. Thinking I'm going to do it for a buck 99 each or something like that and just release them every two weeks. Oh, that's a good price. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's about what I'm going to do. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't quite decided yet, but I just like the idea because each one's a kind of a self-standing book, but it's all, you know. Interconnected. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's something weird that I came up with that uh, um, I write dark fantasy and I, I really kind of like steampunk. So nice. I thought I'd do a dark steampunk, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> something weird. <clears throat> with AIs and you know it's it's just kind of a mishmash or whatever so it's it's kind of my little pet project but uh while I was looking at it and how I break it up it's like yeah I think realistically I'm going to serialize this and uh you're like the fourth person that's told me don't do it so I have to <laughs> know. if you have I, I'd give it a try on Patreon first honestly or you could take it from 
Amazon to Patreon. There's ways, I think there's ways to do it and make it work. It's just, you got to figure it out. Yeah, I'm going to try it on Amazon first. I know, idiot. But, you know, <laughs> no, I mean, it can happen. No one buys it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, repackage it, put it as whatever. And, you know, worst worst case scenario, I, I lump three of them together and call the book. Yeah, I actually just did that with a romance. Uh, I think uh, I think when I talked to you online uh, last time that I was telling you I was also getting ready to release a romance box set for my old pen name. And that's what I did. I took all of my short books, like the ones that are like price one ninety nine yeah. and below, and I put them in a box set and I threw them on Amazon. And now it's in like the top it's in three categories, the top 100 and romance on Amazon right now. So I actually just flipped the price from 99 cents to 5.99. So it's going to definitely be going down uh, in the right. ranking and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, it works. You can always, you can always bundle stuff together and sell it if it doesn't do well. Uh, the nice thing about this whole business is that you can screw up and then just repackage or redo it. Or, you know, if it's a horrible book, you can rewrite it and make it a good book. You know, yeah, you that's can true. Name it. You can re, you know, reface it with a new cover. You can do all sorts of things. And, and it's cr it's crazy what will make things sell too. Like sometimes it's not even the book at all. It's like the cover. It's yeah. you could go in and have like a shitty cover and just recover something, and then it like goes gangbusters. Yeah, so it's weird. It is. It is really weird. <laughs> but I don't know. So what else is on your mind? Not a whole lot. Just, uh, I don't know. Just getting through these days, man. It has been, it's been a, a hard start to the year. I, I gotta say just, just personal stuff, uh, generally. So, um, kind of, kind of just trying to get by and get my editing done. I'm like I said, I'm editing book eight and, and, uh, that's been kind of, kind of slow going. So I went into this year thinking, all right, 2020 it's over. Thank God. And within three days of 2021, it's like, okay, time to get my game face on because you know what? Fuck this shit. I just, <laughs> I'm just going to start swinging. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care anymore. You know, yeah. 2021 just started off, you know, just sucking. And it's like, not again. No, 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 no. You're yeah, not doing it's... this. You know, I'll, I'll be, uh, you know, kind of like that guy in that movie falling down, you know, walking into McDonald's. Uh, I want breakfast, God damn it! <laughs> you ever seen that haven't movie? Seen that. Mm -mm, haven't seen that. Oh, one. this this guy who's just mild mannered, uh, just absolutely goes berserk. You know, he's divorced and everything else, and he he's just walking around town. He somehow gets a hold of a shotgun and he walks into McDonald's before they're actually serving breakfast past ten o'clock in the morning. He asked for breakfast and it's 10, it's like 1130. And they're like, no, he said, well, can you just make me some breakfast? I'm hungry for breakfast. No. And they get snotty with him. So he takes out a shotgun and blows up their menu board. You know, I mean, just, <laughs> and it just goes down. I think it's called falling down is what it is. It is just remarkably, uh, you know, when you're young and you're watching it, you're like, this is so screwy. And when you get older, you're like, I get it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fight the system, dude. You know? whatever but it's oh, great that's that's yeah. gonna be my mantra for uh 2021 it's just like screw you i'm doing it oh man even even just even new year's eve was bad for me but seven days in i i saw this meme it was like uh, i tried the free tw trial of 21 2021 i didn't like it can i roll back yeah get my get my refund or something refund. like that i yeah. was like yeah yeah i feel that way right now <laughs> yeah but, uh, it just started, so we got to get through it. Got to get through it. It's not going to get any better. Oh, I hope it does. Don't say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we are. But um, well, we've been talking for a little over fifty minutes. Do you have any last words for your uh, avid readers? You probably for anybody who doesn't know what's your other pen name for the romance because we do have some uh, we do have some romantic people that actually listen to this so my romance pen name is uh sky corgan the book that i have right now that released was uh it's called the stories we whisper at night and it's uh eight uh eight complete books in one they're shorter books they range from about uh ten thousand to about thirty thousand words each 
So uh, it's just switched over to 599, but it is in KU. Okay. So, so what do you write under Deadly Sniper? <laughs> Not a thing. <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't come up as, uh, as like Dungeon Master or something, because I primarily use Zoom for uh, D&D. So. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> But I am Phoenix Gray, guys. That is, it is not Deadly Sniper. It is Phoenix Gray. <laughs> Look for books from <laughs> Skycourt, Dead. Deadly Sniper, and Phoenix Gray. <laughs> you know, in saying that, there's going to be somebody that emails me saying, I looked in Amazon for Deadly Sniper. I didn't find her. I am so sorry. <laughs> you tried to warn me about this too, and I just wasn't getting it. <laughs> I was actually secretly hoping you'd leave it on. <laughs> well, there you go. You've got your I won. <laughs> I feel like I won something. <laughs> nice. Cool beans. Well, with that, it is, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, get into your, uh, the realm between because that looks, that sounds really cool. It really does. Um, so I'm going to put that on my to be read list at some point in time, I'm actually going to pu publish my, uh, to be read list. Um, just because it's like 60 some deep right now, 61 things actually, no, probably 68 now. Thanks to you. <clears throat> yeah. I buy, if you saw like my Amazon library, I've, I have like, I don't know, like probably about 60 books on there that I bought. I've just bought these books and not read them. Yeah. So yeah, I'm real bad about that. I know. I, I keep on looking at mine and it's just like, oh, I'm never going to get through this, you know, and, and I did, I don't know. <laughs> and Someday. it's probably not a bad thing. It's, it, you know, realistically, it's, it's better than looking through Amazon and going, what the hell am I going to read now? This sucks. This sucks. There's so many good things out there. Well, when we someday are able to retire, we'll have things to keep us busy. So. Right, right. And that's where they'll put the implant in your head. You can just read the book really, really fast. Oh, that'd be awesome. It would be kind of awesome, wouldn't it? Of course, I'm sure. Amazon would figure out a way to like pay us even less, but. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I'm not going to go to Amazon. <laughs> yeah we actually have to pay for the chip to get it implanted and so you know it's a year without any income oh thank you jeff thanks jeff bezos <laughs> thank you yes oh. yeah i'm guessing they're gonna have new contracts with uh, amazon is what i'm guessing knows. coming out this year <laughs> that uh, they'll they'll try and make authors sign it's what I think anyway. So, and, and I'm guessing it's got something to do with, uh, you know, revenue shares and, and everything else. And then it comes with a complimentary dildo that you can stuff up your ass. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that mean? No, no. That's how yeah. everybody feels. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah little, little, uh, you know, <clears throat> pre-printed Jeff Bezos right on the tip that way. Boom. <laughs> I'll have his face on it. So that, yeah. that way you'll know, you'll get to see it. Yeah, see he's who's smiling like all you. the way as he goes right up your butt. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, other than that, other than Jeff Bacon being disgusting, um, <laughs> thank you very much for your time today. Uh, I, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, I know we didn't talk too much about books, but seems like we hit everything else. So that's really cool. And the yeah, that's that my we, fault. No, that's my fault. My fault. Bad host. <laughs> but on the other hand, you know, we got to talk beer. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always a good topic always good always good always good with that i'm going to call this to a close thank you very much for listening this is jeff at the diy writer asking you to please subscribe to my youtube channel or any podcast app that you happen to be listening to this on follow me around and see if we can't uh, uh give these authors some really good press with give that i love. want to say good what's that i said give us some love give us some love damn it and some cash because <laughs> we all are starving artists anyway mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no matter what we say when we say we're making money it's not nearly as much as you guys out there with the checkbook so anyway um i hope that you all are having a great day and keep your chin up through this wonderful 2021 bye bye please hit the subscribe button I get a bonus for every subscriber and I only need 1,506 more to become a full-time paid employee. Help me please.